Hey guys, Will here. How's it going? Uh, today, I just want to do a quick swing analysis of my current swing. If you watched my unboxing video, I did mention that I wanted to go over some of my goals for this summer in that video, but that was before the Rapsodo went totally off the rails and I just didn't have time to squeeze it in. Um, so I was at the range yesterday and filming some swings and messing around with a shot tracer and I thought it'd be a good idea to have a look at where I am at the beginning of summer or you know summer of this journey uh, and watch how things change I guess over the summer. Um, a brief premise of my goal this summer I want to hit a ball over 400 yards. I want to compete in the WLD or world long drive competition. Um, I just need to get to a point where I feel like I'd be competitive and I was hoping with the Rapsodo that I could collect the data and, you know, kind of get a benchmark of where I'm at. So in this, I really hope that you guys could give me some feedback on techniques or tips that could increase my speed and help me hit the ball more solid, more consistently. So if you want to uh, stick around after this, I'll go into more of my background and my experience. Um, but for now, I just want to get into this swing analysis and break it down. So let's check it out. I have two swings here queued up. They're not necessarily my best or worst swings. They're just chosen at random and they're in succession. And ultimately what I did yesterday, I went to the range and was filming and I took these two and just put them in slow motion so we could have a look. And so here, I'm going to pause it just for a sec. Ultimately, I'm just going to explain the different segments of my swing throughout the sequence. And I start off, you'll see my rear heel lifts off the ground. That's to trigger my backswing. And so I bring the club back pretty far and I transition my weight from the front to the back. You see my front heel comes up off the ground, knee turns in. I try to turn my upper torso as far as I can, really just to load up and pull that club back. I'm gonna stop it actually for just a sec. One of the things I did notice when I go back, I'm just curious if my my left arm should be straighter. I, I didn't realize I bent it that much, but anyway, then the heel drops down in the front foot and I start pulling the club through. I notice my arm then here, it does get back to a straighter position when I'm coming into the ball strike. Like that's relatively straight. Hands are cocked back, but then just come through, hit the ball. And if you follow that ball, it's a pretty low flight. Um, and I'll get into that in just a second. And ultimately, it'll speed up here. You can follow it if you have it on full screen because of the trees there. And it kind of just rises a little bit. I think it's pretty spinny. So I'm going to cut in here real quick. Um, just to give you an idea of the distance of that shot that we were looking at. This is about where I would expect that one to end up. I went home after I got done at the range and checked on Google Earth to get an idea of how deep this range is. And because this one didn't have the height that I generally look for, um, I'd say it was only about 285. It was a bullet out there, it was hit hard, but I don't think it carried very far. I also took this measurement when I was on Google Earth at 327, I feel like this green over here is a good marker to know like if I was really getting into any balls. Um, the next time I go to this range, I think I'm going to go head out here afterwards and see if I sprinkled any balls around out there. But it's just a good landmark to aim for. But anyway, back to the analysis, the swing analysis. So if we go back to the beginning of this swing, 
again rear heel lifts up going to the back swing my trailing arm i try to bend that like and align that with my shoulders and the ball when i'm hitting so i'll get to the peak here somewhere in there so i want to line up my shoulders and my trailing elbow with the ball and really really load that club up so that I can generate as much power and speed as I can and then transition and here's another thing I want I would love to get some feedback on so I watched a couple of uh, swing analysis videos um, one in particular was uh, fast Eddie Fernandez he's checking out Kyle Berkshire swing and he's got he has really cool software or whatever where he's you know drawing lines and all this stuff and um he's talking about how the wrists kyle's wrists don't break until like the club is like way down and at 90 degrees which here let me just see if i can get a couple more frames forward here uh you're gonna have to bear with me i'm on this little slider here see i'm coming in and that's probably as close as i can get to where the club is parallel and i wish i had different camera angles unfortunately i don't for this one but i'm curious if that angle that i'm at right there is the reason my angle of attack may have been flat and when i came in and hit that ball the trajectory was really low so if i was able to maybe lag a little bit more and in the other video that i watched so i watched two videos this morning there was another one where uh, josh and dana are talking about kyle's swing and this trailing elbow stays behind the rib cage and you can see my elbow is getting out in front my hips i think are still in front of my shoulders but i've got my hands coming out too fast rather than lagging more and it's creating a flatter maybe club angle coming into the ball where when i hit it the ball comes out like i'm i'm right at the apex of my downswing when i make contact with the ball and maybe i hit it a little low on the club face i don't know you guys let me know what you think because i'm just kind of fumbling around in the dark here but um when I if I can so right there like that's the kind of the lowest point of my swing right when I'm hitting the ball and really what I should be doing is hitting the ball when I'm when I'm slightly coming up I think and having I guess it would be a higher angle of attack to get the ball up in the air more and another thing I was in the simulator hitting right before this and the ceiling in the simulator was really low, so I couldn't do a real driver swing without hitting the ceiling with my driver. And so I was kind of trying to adjust my swing and just do this little abbreviated punch shot and just see if I could still put one out there ways. And I noticed that when I was messing with my swing in there, um, the balls were coming out really low and I was hitting them basically, I was, I was swinging under them. so. I've got the ball teed up here pretty low because I didn't want to, I actually racked a club. I put dents in the top of it when I was in the simulator and I didn't want to do that again out here. And so I just tried teeing it up lower. And I think that may have resulted in me swinging deeper or more down into the ball rather than, yeah, see, because I just, I had been going under the ball but anyway that's that swing and um i want to move on to the to the next one i have links in the description below to the two swing analysis videos that i watched this morning before making this video so if you guys want to check those out maybe helpful i just other than just explaining 
step by step what I do. I don't really have a whole lot to add to make improvements. But after watching those, I really want to work on getting more lag, keeping my hands back longer and not forcing them through. Um, I was, I, I play softball, I, I played baseball, and so I kind of have a baseball swing. This is sort of how I've always swung where I load up. But so here's my second swing, and it's a bit different. There's, I watched it earlier today, and it seems like either my shoulders or my body drop. I'll, I'll point it out when we get there. But again, rear heel drops, front heel comes up, weight transitions from front to back, up on the ball of my foot, and then try to jam that heel down. And now I'd, I'd like some feedback on this. Like, you see how my weight transferred from back to front and this one I skied this one went pretty high you can follow that ball but just curious if when rotating should I be more on a line rather than moving from like you can see how when I go back here see how my weight is back and then I dip that shoulder in like dip it down and coming in like I just don't know but then I I'm raising back up. Yeah, let's check my hands on that one too. I want to look at, um, get kind of like the 90 degree thing again and see if my trailing elbow remains behind my rib cage on this one. So it's coming down. I still haven't broken the wrist. I'm already like, yeah. So see how my elbow is out in front of my ribs? That's no bueno. I need to keep my hands back further and get my upper torso. So first it's like the sequence of get your hips out in front of your upper torso and it follows and then the hands follow and everything goes boom, boom, boom. So there we go, I'm coming in. I really drop down the weight. And yeah, that elbow needs to be back. That trailing elbow needs to stay back. And so let's see if I can get it right around. Yeah, I don't think there's a frame in there. That's about as close as I can get. So then hands come through. But I am swinging up more at the ball on that one. So that's better. But anyway, then you can... Eh, that one vanished into the clouds. I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. That's just a quick slow motion of my swing. I'd love any feedback from you guys. If you care to stick around, I'm going to briefly do a little discussion about my background and experience uh, so you can get an idea of where I'm coming from and where I'm trying to go with this. So a little about me. I uh, grew up playing baseball and didn't really have a whole lot of exposure to golf. I did love when my grandpa would take me out to the driving range when I was like 16, 17 in, down in Arizona in Apache Junction or Mesa, I don't remember, but they had a wall out there about 300 yards and the whole goal was hit it over the wall. And even with those old like 90s clubs, I remember being able to bomb a few over the wall and my grandpa would be like, wow, you know, you really hit the ball far. And ultimately, you know, I, I'm 44 now. I'd say in the last 20 years, I maybe played 25 rounds of golf with buddies or people from work. And I get generally the same comments like, wow, you hit the ball a long way. So I started looking into it last summer or late last summer, October even, and discovering that there was this thing called the PLDA. Uh, professional Long Drivers Association where you could just sign up and join. And that's kind of what gave me the idea. This year it's changed to WLD. And I've only just started watching some of the long drivers like Kyle Berkshire, Martin Borgmeyer, uh, even Bryson DeChambeau and Justin James and Joe Miller, all these guys to get an idea of like, you know, 
how hard are they swinging or how far are they hitting the ball? And, you know, when I watch their swing, I, I think like, man, I could, I could get there if I really put some time and focus into it, maybe. <laughs> but ultimately, that's what this is. This is documenting that journey to see if the average Joe, 44 year old guy, can like put it together and, you know, bomb a ball out there over 400 yards. Right now, I'm just swinging play drivers that are dialed down. I've got a PXG that's at like six degrees. I've got a Stealth 2 that's at seven degrees. And I don't know how much the long drive equipment adds. I'm sure it'll help me with reducing my spin. Um, maybe give me just a couple extra miles an hour on my swing speed, but I'd like to get some like a long driver driver with the 48 inch shaft. My longest right now is 46 and a long drive head that has lower loft on it, like a four or five degree and see if that helps because I notice, um, and I'll, I'll post a video here where I have this monocular that I can zoom out a long way and I hit the ball, but the, the scope of that view is so tight that I hardly ever capture any of the balls landing. And I did, I did get one. So just to measure the hang time of my ball, it was eight seconds or more, you know, so, and it didn't go very far. So that's what gives me the idea that, man, I must be like, putting a lot of spin on the ball and it could be because my loft is just too high or you know my swing angle cover my angle of attack is just too low as we saw in that first video here's a video where I'm zoomed out to the end of the range uh, sorry about the quality of this video it's really hazy around the outside but the ball is gonna land to the left of that white stick there the blackberries there are at 285 yards, so I don't know that this helps my case any, but I just want to show the hang time on this. This was just a drive that ballooned up into the air, and I think it was just a lot of spin, which is what I'm trying to reduce, and that's what kept the ball from traveling farther and having a lower trajectory that would help me increase my distance, I guess. But anyway check it out i set it to a timer let me know what you think and i don't have a coach or anything like that i'm just going to the range because i live five minutes from a golf course and there's so many courses and so many ranges in my area and i would love to raise awareness in this area because i know i have like 10 buddies that i play softball with that can probably swing a club harder than me and i would guess and the reason i got the rap soto and I thought that I was about 130 miles an hour, but I'm probably more in the range of 140 miles an hour. And when I watch WLD on YouTube, like that's all these guys are swinging. It's like 140. I'm like, man, I can get 10 buddies that can swing a club 140. Because they're monsters. They hit bombs in softball that are over the lights and stuff. So, and I mean, it's all about sequencing your hips and your shoulders and keeping your hands back and driving through so anyway i'm looking for just some feedback because nobody in this area is really interested in this and maybe i'm in the youtube community there's somebody out there that could help me um, increase my distance and get me to that point where i could compete in, in a world long drive event uh, like i said when i watched it those guys in the amateur division you know hitting the ball 350 I've driven many par four that are 350. Um, I think, I, and I'm not talking about like hard dog leg left or right where I sliced it out of bounds and over or something or whatever, but just straight away, bombed it down, 
you know, 340, 350. So I know I can hit the ball at least that far and compete in the amateur division, but see how far it goes. See how far an average Joe can hit a ball, you know, when he puts his mind to it. And I hope you guys keep watching as I document it. And I hope you get give, can give me good feedback on how to improve my striking because I can already swing it hard. I just don't hit the ball well consistently. So thanks again, guys. And until next time, I'll see you later.